Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna be moving this Grand Cascade butterfly bush a little further back in this bed. I planted it too close to the lawn and it gets, you know, I'm six feet tall, so it's right at six feet tall uh, in, in a single season. It gets cut back every winter and comes back this tall. And it's just right here on the edge of the lawn. I would like to have lower things here and slide this back. There are three white wedding hydrangeas behind uh, this uh, butterfly bush that you can't even see very well. I'm actually gonna take one of those white weddings out, just slide this Grand Cascade back right where it is. It's totally happy here, so I'm not gonna move it far. I'm just gonna regain the edge of my uh, turf space here. Typically, we'll cut these butterfly bushes back hard in the late winter. Uh, I'm a little early for that. I'm in December here doing this job, but I got time, so I'm gonna get it done. It's got some new growth on it, unfortunately. Uh, you can see I'm in shorts and a short sleeve shirt here in December. It's been very abnormally warm. And so literally the thing's waking back up. I'm gonna cut it and move it anyway. These are tough as nails. No real reason to uh, worry about it. You do, when I cut it back though, I wanna make sure my tools are good and sharp. So I, I have a set of bypass loppers if there's a big branch that I need to cut. Um, hand pruners, doesn't really matter what you're using. Just make sure you make smooth cuts, especially in the winter time. We just don't want any spot that's, you know, water can get in and, and freeze and thaw and, and cause any problems for us. The butterfly bush part of this operation should be easy. I'm gonna just go around the edge of it. Um, I'm gonna cut it back, throw this material on my compost pile back there, um, dig around it to cut the roots, and then I gotta get that white wetting out. So that's what you are about to see now. Okay, so one thing I am paying attention to is I'm gonna cut directly above a bud. And so I want to cut it down to about 16, 18 inches high and directly above a bud. So maybe I'll leave these, these two buds in place right there. That's a good spot to cut this one. And again, super sharp, brand new tool uh, that makes just a perfect cut on the top. Again, I'm just going to go uh, just above flower buds. Looks mean. It's not. Uh, butterfly bushes bloom on new growth. And so None of this was going to have flowers on it. Uh, the flowers were going to come from new growth next year. Uh, so I'm just identifying a bud along the stem and cutting it directly, directly above it. And just like that, it's all cut back. I'm going to go in here and clean up some leaves just so I can see the ground around it uh, to dig. Uh, this is the uh, white wedding hydrangea that's going to move. I think I'm going to move this to the front um, to the front yard somewhere. Same thing. This is this hydrangea blooms on new wood, and so all of this can be cut back. I'll show you that in just a minute uh, after I get this cleaned up around this butterfly bush. Uh, I'm just going to reuse these leaves. As soon as I'm done, these leaves are just going to go right back in this in this space. They'll be mulched over later may not look the best today but it's good ground cover for the winter okay so i've got the trenching shovel i always use okay i'm just going to go around uh, this butterfly bush and cut the roots uh, about well the drip line was about here i'm going to come in maybe slightly wider than the than than what's left uh, on the plant cut a circle all the way around I have an old video about moving a camellia at the old house. That camellia had been in the ground for a long time and plants that have been in the ground for a long time will actually pre-cut the roots. I'll go around and cut the surface roots on the plant and then actually leave it in place for a couple months and just kind of prepare it to be moved. I have I've had a lot of success doing that. This butterfly bush, two things. Number one, it's tough as nails. And so I don't think it would matter all that much, especially in the winter time right now. And number two, it just hasn't been in the ground that long. So it shouldn't be, it's not super, super well established. And so uh, I'm not gonna worry about that step, but it, on an older, a much older butterfly bush, I'd probably right about now, as you're seeing this video, if you wanted to move one, go out, cut the roots on it 60 days from now, you know, move it to its new location. Uh, it is helpful. But again, I don't think, I mean, already just in about 30% going around this, the plant's already moving freely. So I just don't think there's much to this. The shovel worked better when it was three inches longer. I've worn the thing down to 
I can't get under the plant as much anymore. There you go. Okay, I do have drip irrigation out here and I'm trying to cut through it right now with my shovel by accident. Okay. There you go, that's pretty loose. At this point, I just leave it in place if I were, uh, if it was an older established one, once I got it about like this. Uh, it kind of lets it reestablish a few roots right in the center before you move it. It's less stressful. But there you go, that's all I needed. Not gonna be a whole lot of roots on this thing. When I'm only sliding a plant from one spot to another, I will literally just pull this up on the edge and slide it over there and drop it in the hole. You'll see that in just a second. This white wetting hydrangea, in order to not knock the, uh, a lot of soil off of it, I'm actually going to put it on a, uh, um, on a piece of plastic so I can slide it around to the front yard. It can either be picked up, put in a wheelbarrow, or, again, if I can, I like to put them on a piece of plastic and slide them. You'll see why in a minute. I'm going to go after this hydrangea pretty hard. Again, it blooms on new growth, so it won't have any impact on next year. Uh, these paniculatas, um, this is white wedding, but if you have limelight, little lime, I don't care what it is, uh, any paniculata, uh, you can go after them pretty hard in the winter time. And um, generally, uh, they transplant quite well. So not even taking my time on this. It's not that big of a deal. I think that will do it right there. I'm gonna pull the leaves back from around it a bit so I can see. Uh, see how to dig it out of here easier. I'm trying to create a screen down the middle of this, uh, this little bed that's back here and I'm, I'm putting the taller things right in the center for that reason. That butterfly bush ended up completely out of place. Okay. Okay, yeah, and there's my drip irrigation line is right there. So I'm gonna be careful with that. Here's another plant, hadn't been in the ground that long. And so one shovel into the ground, you can already see it moving. Uh, Just my soil is so improved from just having compost and keeping it covered for the last 24 months. It's really, really changed it. Not even that long, actually. Don't break the irrigation, Jim. Okay. This will be a small root ball. This is probably not a great demonstration on transplanting plants. The camellia I moved in a video several years ago, if you want to look that up, was an eight foot tall uh, camellia sasanqua. It was big, big. Uh, once I get it uh, loosened completely like I just did, I'll make sure my, sometimes it's helpful to have two people, to have one person pull it back a bit like that, and then the other person kind of go under and break the remaining break the remaining roots uh, just like that but this one is this one's free now okay this typically again we'll have a bigger let me put this out of the way of the camera we'll have a bigger root ball but I'll take a piece of plastic uh, like this tarp and I'll pull my plant, I'll drag the plant up onto, up onto the tarp like this and cut any, any residual roots just like that. And I'll put it on the tarp. And the reason I like to tarp a plant like this is, is on, if I lift it up into a wheelbarrow and then take it around to where it's going uh, in the front yard, I'm gonna knock a lot more soil off of it. If I find that if I just barely lift them, slide them onto something like this, and then just slide it to where it's going, I do less, I'll do less damage. Again, this is a very small root ball. 
and uh, um, this one could just be put in a pot and carried over there. But uh, just I just wanted to demonstrate that if you're moving large material, it's easy on a sl make a sled. Uh, basically, I'm going to go ahead and cut these other two uh, hydrangeas back while I'm working on this. Again, this is typically late winter operation, but it doesn't really matter all that much. They're dormant enough. So, again, looks mean. Definitely is not. They will bloom actually heavier because of this. There'll be more branching on them. These were super, super showy, but I couldn't really see them all that much behind this uh, butterfly bush. It's still, the butterfly bush is still gonna be here, but these will be left and right of it. So I'll see them more. A lot of people use these hydrangeas for decorating. You can see why, how long they last. They've been, these were flowers from mid to late summer and they still look great even in their papery color they have now. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I wanna center the, uh, I wanna center the butterfly bush back here between these two. It's out a little bit, but centered. The soil is so different. Don't need much of a hole. Again, this is only a year and a half old plant, so there's just not a lot, not a lot of digging to do here. There weren't a lot of roots. I do want you to pay look at this soil though. If I go down, I want to go down far enough so you guys can see. If I go way down here, which there's no reason to to plant this plant, but I want to show you. This is what the soil looked like out here 24 months ago. You see that? That's just bricks is what that looks like, right? You see that? Um, that's what the soil looked like. And now by just feeding, putting this compost layer down and then wood chips, and then hardwood mulch a couple of times. It's just completely and totally changed this space. Okay, so again, on this particular one, uh, I'm just dragging it uh, from one spot to the other. Uh, the soil now is so loose, in fact, it's uh, a lot of it's just falling off, this, off the roots on this. Just making sure it's completely free and then giving it a little bit of support, bringing it back here into place. I want the crown of this plant raised above this soil. So if I, if I clear off the edges of where I've been digging and I lay this uh, shovel across there, I want the crown of this to be above that shovel, okay? That's very, very important. If it sits down too low, if I end up burying it too low, um, it will uh, end up staying too wet. So it's about perfect right now. And uh, I've just got to get some soil around it. It's got kind of a flat back where it didn't get as much sun on it. I actually put the flat back toward the light just to get the, try to get this thing to fill out. I did not put the best face forward, but on a butterfly bush that grows six feet in a season, uh, it'll correct that really quickly. I intentionally put the bad side forward on a fast growing plant so I can get it, get it balanced out. Okay, so I'm gonna start kind of pressing this soil in here delicately. It needs to be watered in to get around all those roots. Water will be very helpful to this. Okay, so a plant that hadn't been in the ground that long, like this one, it's just really easy peasy. It's more about being brave than anything else and just doing it. Okay, there you go. It's tamped in pretty well. I'll water it. If that gives, if it settles any after I water it, I'll put a little bit more soil around it. And then these leaves will just get um, swept into, uh, into place here. All right. Okay, so other than some uh, cleanup of the uh, hydrangea flowers and, and some other things I cut back, uh, this is pretty much wrapped up. 
Uh, you, you notice I brought the water hose over here. I watered and that did knock some soil off of the roots and, and settled it down into the uh, hole. And then I added some more soil on top of that. So that's a good strategy for getting some of that soil wrapped back around those loose roots. Uh, but then be careful when you're tamping it down. Don't, you know, you saw me tamping it, but I'm, I'm really lightly tamping it. Don't, when the soil's wet like that, if you put big footprints in it and press it down really hard, you can over compact the soil. Uh, so, so be careful of that. Just lightly tamp it down and use the water as the strategy to settle it and, uh, uh, and re-establish it. It's pretty firm in here now. Uh, this uh, butterfly bush is super easy. It's only been in the ground for you know, two years, so, uh, or less than two years. So it went, it went really, really easily. If it's an older established plant, again, cut the roots on it and then come back in 60 days, cut it back and move it. Exact same thing I did, just pre-cut the roots uh, on it. And again, this is mostly about uh, bravery. If you can, if you've got a long way to move it, I would put it on some sort of tarp like I did that hydrangea uh, because you won't knock the roots. Uh, you won't knock so much of the soil off if you're just barely lifting it out of the ground and setting it on the tarp. If you have to put it in a wheelbarrow, you have to put it in a wheelbarrow, but I've always found a tarp is best. Uh, one uh, thing here about fertilizer, um, I do not use any sort of transplant fertilizer. I think it's uh, I don't use any kind of transplant fertilizer. I think it's unnecessary. Uh, the, uh, but all of my plants do get fertilized in the late winter. So this one will settle in here for the next 60 days or so. And then I'll be putting up a fertilizing video sometime around late February to mid-March. Somewhere in there it will get fertilizer. But otherwise, it's, it's unnecessary uh, to use a transplant fertilizer, really. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and you can see me fertilize it in the spring and you can see it bounce back to six feet in height by uh, next summer and be back in full flower.